welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be talking all about PEOS. PEOS is a privacy coin that's going to be on EOS, combining the awesome technology of Monero with the amazing performance of the EOS blockchain. So in this video, I wanna accomplish a few things. I wanna break down for you exactly what PEOS is, how it works, and also inform you uh, that you've got a few days left to claim PEOS that you have that you may not know about or you may lose it because it's going to get burned, any unclaimed PO. So make sure you watch this. There's a good chance uh, you receive some in the airdrop that happened February 25th, and the, 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 the burn is set uh, two months from that date, which should be April 25th, which is only about five or six days from now, depending on when you're watching this video. So. What is PEOS, okay? And as always, uh, do your own research, guys. This is not investment advice. Uh, I can't say that enough. So, you ever feel like you're being watched? Um, PEOS enables private and untraceable transactions on EOS. So, it's blazing fast, private and untraceable, as we mentioned. How is that, how is that possible, right? So many of you guys may or may not be familiar with exactly what Monero is, and I wanna show you. Uh, here in the white paper, this is a, a good visual way to sort of understand what uh, happens when you're leveraging ring signatures, uh, ring confidential transactions, and stealth addresses, okay? So basically, what is blockchain, right? Obviously, if I were to send you a transaction, you could look at my account name and see, or anybody could, see that I sent money to you, and they'd know how much, they'd know where I sent it, they'd know when I sent it, uh, and that is an amazing aspect of blockchain, which I think is so crucial for you know basically any and all transactions, um, or, or several types of transactions, but there is a gigantic need within blockchain to have, com uh, to have privacy and to be able to send transactions to people you want and maybe not have all of your purchases be in the public where people can look at what you spent your money on. Maybe you want to keep some things private and as a free citizen uh, of the world, right, who, who is in control of their funds, you should have that option. So. Let's say Alice and Carol, they're both sending transactions uh, or, or, or they want to send something to Bob. So they would be sending and basically what happens is you kind of have these one time key, these one time addresses generated when the transactions go into the batch. So it's really it really makes it impossible to fall to exactly follow um, where that that those those tokens that were sent went to. Right. So it kind of puts up multiple addresses. Like if I were to send to you, it would show that I sent to, you know, you under sort of a different address mixed with, you know, four or more different addresses. And then, you know, finding where that went uh, makes it near impossible, okay? So why is this important? Um, and they, they pose a really good question here in the white paper that I think is really important for people to think about. Uh, would you openly share your entire financial history, right? The answer is probably no. Uh, and, and, and again, one of the most amazing things coming with crypto is the ability to, you know, use it in a private way. Um, what is that comparative to in the real world? Well, cash, right? If I were to go pay you cash, um, in your store and I buy something I don't want people to know that I'm buying and it doesn't even necessarily need to be for something malicious It can just be medicine or Whatever whatever it is that you want if, if you want privacy around it that you want to purchase um, You can do it in cash, right? I mean how many businesses transact in cash people buy their You know anything they want at the corner store with cash and there's no there's no traceability There's no hey did you buy this on this date? Um, you know when you purchase things with cash and that was something in crypto in some ways we were missing uh, because everything was auditable and traceable, although again with with accounts um, on EOS, you do have the ability and the flexibility to make those accounts a public type of name, where you can pick the name you want, and people can you know see that your name is you know Shasta Bottle Twelve, or you can be H E Z D E M D F Nine, whatever you want, right? Um, so. This is really exciting technology that I think is going to be really great. Uh, we're going to get the timeline on what POS is offering or, or, or when, when uh, the, the, it's supposed to go live on mainnet and we'll be able to use this. Um, but it is, it is something that's coming very, very soon. Uh, so let's say it's DEX compatible as well. I'm going to show you guys again, not financial advice, but people always ask on videos if I talk about a token, where is it? Where can I find it? So I'm going to show you guys, uh, let me just show you now on new DEX. Um, many of you guys may or may not have used Nudex. I covered it a couple videos ago as um, a token I thought was really interesting, sort of following the tokenomics and the model of what's worked thus far for Binance. Um, but it's a great, I, I think in my, in, my, in my experience, a very great uh, user experience for uh, a DEX. You don't have to make deposits. You can trade and keep your funds safe in your account. Um, but POS does trade on here. And yeah, the, C the symbol's literally just POS. Uh, and today, actually, they had the most volume of any EOS tokens 
listed here. So obviously people, you know, people are starting to find out about it uh, and some, <laughs> some are acquiring it clearly. Um, so let's look at the roadmap real quick. So PO started uh, February 11th of 2018. Wow. Okay. The white paper was published. Um, and am I reading this backwards on these dates? No. Okay. Okay. That is, <laughs> that is month first. Uh, okay. EOS account snapshots again was on February 15th of 2019. Uh, the airdrop started and then POS launched uh, or is launching on jungle testnet and Q2, which we're now in, and then it's launching live on mainnet Q3, right? So you've got January, February, March, April, May, June, and then July, August, September, that's Q3. So something, sometime in Q3, POS will officially launch. The team is taking 200 million POS uh, and then 50 million for marketing and operations with a one-to-one -one distribution for people. So if you had um, EOS at the time of the snapshot here on February 15th, then if you had a thousand EOS, then you got a thousand POS that should be in your account. But this is how EOS works. And you guys need to understand this. If I were to just, if someone were to just airdrop and send you tokens until you authorize and claim those tokens, or you transfer any amount of those tokens, I would be on the hook when I do an airdrop to cover that RAM for you. Why? Because it's not fair that you should have to pay for the RAM for something that you didn't go out and get, right? I just gave it to you. So if I just gave you something, it may or may not be worth value. And if you now have to have RAM to cover that, that'd be pretty unfair. But uh, on the flip side, again, it really does show um, and levels of, uh, of people when they gauge interest on a project, right? If you don't even claim tokens, you don't send them, you don't whatever. I mean, how, how likely are you to be an active member of that community? So what POS is going to do, as I mentioned in about five days, is they're going to get rid of and they're going to burn any tokens that aren't claimed that they're still paying the RAM for. So if you hold POS and you've already claimed yours, this is probably a good thing for you because the supply is going to get smaller. There's going to be a massive burn um, of those who haven't claimed their tokens. From my understanding and the most accurate numbers I got recently on this, almost half of the tokens that were airdropped have not been claimed. So this means that, that the supply, if, if nothing changed from, from who claims from this video, could decrease by 40 to 50% uh, if, if nobody else were to claim that those tokens that they have. So if you guys think uh, a privacy token on EOS that has the technology of Monero, where you're able to send people transactions privately and not be traced with what you do for, you know, particular transactions that you so choose, uh, is important, then you may want to claim these tokens. You can come here and claim your POS. It'll take you over to this page. Make sure you have scatter connected. Um, if you guys are using the, the, the uh, browser extension for, for scatter, you definitely should upgrade to the, uh, to the, to the, um, the computer-based version, right? Where it's sitting on your browser. It's a much safer version, but if you have that open with any of your accounts that had EOS at the time of that snapshot, and you want to claim your your uh, your POS, you can come here, click connect with Scatter, one click and claim, it's very easy. Or um, you can just send any amount of POS that you have to another account that you have uh, to then take ownership and claim um, of all the POS that you now have, right? So uh, again, guys, I think, um, I, I know personally for me, um, when I use Monero in the past, I, I don't know if you guys uh, have heard of Monero, I'm sure most of you guys have, but Monero was really uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, and is a very, very cool uh, decentralized privacy coin. But I'll be honest with you guys, I got really into it at one point um, in terms of sending private transactions and doing that. but. I just really, really did not like the user interface. I, I didn't feel like it was very user friendly. You know, there was no way for me to use and transact with it that I found at that time um, all, from my mobile phone. Maybe there is now, and if you guys know of a way, tell me below. Um, but having POS fully integrated into the EOS ecosystem and available to be transferred on any and all of these private wallets that people are using, um, or, or these mobile wallets people are using, or even on their desktop versions of uh, you know interacting with their account using things like Scatter, having it be as fast as EOS and instant, but I'm gonna be you know, able to just not be traced on, on, on certain things I wanna do, I think is quite amazing, right? And whether, um, whether it's gonna be POS or whether it's gonna be Monarios or whatever that is, um, clearly, right, we're still in this race to see what happens with uh, you know, projects that have announced wanting to be a privacy coin on EOS. Um, I really like what I've seen thus far while looking through the white paper for, for POS, and as always, I definitely recommend to read it for yourself. Uh, and check it out if you guys haven't. Um, and keep up to date with the dates that they've got. I plan to probably do some updates on POS as we get closer. I definitely will when it launches and goes live. I definitely would like to try it for myself and see how the UI compares um, with something like Monero. But, but 
all in all, if, if the user experience can be as simple as sending uh, and receiving tokens are for any other EOS token right now, but you have the, you know, the untraceability of it, I mean, that's something that's going to be really exciting that I'm looking forward to. Um, I hope that this video brought you guys value. As always, I will put uh, the link below for you guys. Last thing as well, if you do see and want to check your account on, on a block explorer like blocks, B-L-O-K-S dot I-O, you're going to want to make sure that the token you have, if you do have POS, that this is the token contract, okay? So for karma, if any of you guys have karma, you guys would see the token contract is the real karma. Um, people can make their own karma token, but under a different token uh, address, right? And so you sometimes, you, 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 we definitely in a lot of projects try to do that on Ethereum when get on the DEXs having the same symbol, but a different token address. So make sure that you, your guys' tokens are this address. This is the official address of POS tokens that went out. So the POS token. Um, as always, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video uh, and that you got value from it. Um, I, I, you know, full disclosure, obviously, you know, uh, clearly I have some POS as well, right? I, I got some in the airdrop. I picked up some myself. That's why I'm saying it's not financial advice. But if you got some for free in the airdrop, why not claim it? Either way, have an awesome day. Thank you guys for hopping on the video. I really appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Comment below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.